we go, I'm here. G'day, good morning, day 14. Hi, I'm Steve Hay, this is Woodworking Masterclass or a day in the shed with Steve. Ah, welcome. Who have we got in here? G'day, Ray, g'day, Chad. G'day, Brian, g'day, your Royal Highness, Mum. Uh, Wombat, Lucas, Six Knots. Oh, Jared, Paul. Paul, now, you asked me to do something. Was, was it you asked me about the compass points or dovetails? Because I'm going to do something like that in a minute. G'day, Brandon. How you going, mate? G'day, Wayne. We're all safe and well, thank you. Oh, yeah, well, look, I am so You can tell I'm upbeat. I'm motivated. I'm there. I'm on fire and I'm raring to go. You know why? I'll tell you. I, I got a phone call yesterday and... Due to the circumstances that are enveloping everyone, I don't need to have those boxes done for the next few days. So, whew, I am a happy chappy. Having said that, there they are. They, whoop, there they are. They've all been lined, all the lining. I'll go show you. The linings have all been done. Oh, dear, oh, dear. There you go. All the linings are in there. I haven't put the top ones in yet because I've got to fit the hearts. But they are all ready to rock and roll. I would have got them all done in time, but I wouldn't have been, oh, my happy bubbly self. I would have been betired. Uh, six knives, both the dovetails out. Oh, okay, well, we won't do the compass today. But what I thought we'd do today, because I've got a reprieve and I can put my mind into neutral, well, almost, let me just get a, a drink of water. I just want to, I'll start, do a little bit on that chair repair. And I thought, why not cover basic woodworking techniques with hand tools? We might use the odd machine or three, that's all right. But I'm going to throw it open to the chat room. If anyone wants to know anything particular, about woodworking, how to use a particular plane, how to sharpen something, how to cut a joint or whatever. Uh, now's the time. Now is the time. G'day, Trevor. How are you, mate? Um, no, no, I, I, what I thought was, Mariah, do I have an advanced financial advisor? No, my dear. You've got to have money to have a financial advisor. I... <laughs> I have a, um, <laughs> I won't say that, but no, no, I don't. And, uh, yeah, gone, gone are the days of being flash and flush, I'm sorry. Mind you, it's nice to say that I've been there, but now I'm just a poor, lowly woodworker scraping and eking living and trying to buy toilet paper online. Um, oh, dear. David, uh, sharpening the choosing area would be great. Yeah, no worries. Well, what I've got, I'm get, I've got a bit of paper here. I'm going to write this down. What I thought, if I don't get asked anything, um, we'll grab a bit of timber and I might make a box. Oh, not another box. Oh, gee whiz. No, what I'll do is I'll do four different joints on the box. So one corner will do dovetails. Another corner, we might do hard. Uh, yeah, we might do. Okay, we'll do throat. Well, I don't know. I hate doing through dovetails. All right, we'll do through dovetails in one corner. We'll do uh, lap dovetails on another corner. We'll do a lap joint on one corner. And we'll do a, we could do a miter or a mortise and tenon. Well, that, that way we could do a, let me have a look. Yeah, we could do a miter and a mortise and tenon, and a lap, and a half lap dovetail. We might do that. Bring out the moving fillers, mate. We might get into that as well. Absolutely. Oh, dear, oh, dear. I tell you, I've got to adjust. What's this? I'm just going to adjust this clock up here, if I can. <laughs> Without breaking my neck, and don't, I'm not allowed to laugh at my skinny legs, because... I look up at the clock and I look down here on the timer and they're different. They are. They're different. How do you change it? Oh, too complicated. No, 
I thought it'd have buttons on the front, but it doesn't. So that's the job for that's the job for Ron. Hey Steve, the packs brand saws. Yeah, good. They're good. I've got a few. Um, there you go. That's a pack fret saw. Now it looks like I'll show you a gent saw. It look they're all I think they're all made by garlic anyway. There's packs, crown and garlic. And uh, they're all pretty much of a muchness. The main difference between Pax and garlic is the handle colour. That's the Pax. See, Pax. And it's got a walnut coloured handle. And then that one hasn't got a... Oh, this one might have one. No. <laughs> I've worn the trademark off of all of those. Oh, I've got some new ones up in the shed, though. Um, and that's a, a garlic and sun gent saw or dovetail saw. And if you look at them, I mean, this, they're beach, European beach handles. And the crown one has a slightly different handle, but it's that colour. But, yeah, no, they're good. Uh, that's, a, that's if you're doing carcass dovetails, dovetail saw. Of course, that's a Pax back saw. Um, no, good brand. I like them. I like them. Oh, dear. Let me put all these away. Oh, that, that's the other thing. Between a fret saw... Now, this is going to get confusing because that is also called a fret saw. There you go. That's also called a fret saw. Not to be confused with a coping saw that often gets called a fret saw. No, the little one's a coping saw. Big one's a fret saw. Now that's for fret work. That's a fret saw for guitars. For... No, I haven't, haven't got one there, have I? Anyway, cutting the the frets for your notes. That's what that fret saw is. And the other one is for cutting fret work. Now the interesting thing between a gent saw and a fret saw, this works on the push. A fret saw is like a Japanese saw, it works on the pull. There you go. You didn't expect that much of an explanation, did you, Trevor? Oh. G'day, Jeff. How are you, mate? Um, oh, well, we might do a cabinet scraper first because they're, they're pretty easy to do. I will. I'll bring that moving filler through. Don't you worry about that. Kendo, welcome from Brazil. I would love a video about using a manual belt sander. Um, manual belt sander. Are you talking about one of these type of... Sanders, which is a, a bow sander. I'll give you a better look at it. There you go. Is that what you're talking about, Kanda? Because we can do that as well. I'll, I'll put all these down. So what, what have we got? Moving philister. Card scraper. Um... Rounds and hollows. Oh, look, I tell you what, I woke up this morning and, oh, dear, it was so nice to have that without, oh, you got to do it, you got to do it. I think I actually went up to the house before 7 o'clock last night where Sue said, what are you doing? I said, I'm taking the night off. It's all good. So, no, I'm pleased because even though I would have got it done, I really like to get it done and then leave it in the workshop for a couple of days so I can look at it and fix little mistakes that I've missed. Oh, someone else asked me the other day about wax repairs, so we'll do that. And we'll do putty repairs. Um...
What else? We'll think about it. G'day Louise, g'day John or uh, Devon, what do you prefer? Whichever, welcome. So exactly why did she go with you, Travis? She made sure, oh, that's it. Overture, hit the lights, this is it, the night of nights. Ha, oh, don't I wish. Uh, I'm just making sure, I'll, if I've missed anyone, sorry, whack your name in again and I'll say g'day. Panda, how are ya? Oh dear. <whistles> Jeff, rumour has it that in tonight's episode, just for Max Steve show said he is a router on the lathe. I've done that before too. I, the, the lathe out there, I've got a, uh, what do you call it? Trimmer set up in a jig that came with the lathe. And it's if you're doing, oh, you want to do reading or um, beading on spindles, the lathe's indexed. And you just click it, run your router up, click it over, run your router up, and you get all these cool little patterns. But there you go. I'm not going to do it today, though. I was going to go up the, and turn the bowl today, but we might do that tomorrow. Hey, Lucas. Oh, I've said Lucas, haven't I? Sorry. Uh, quick Googling suggests Pax Scarlet Crown are all indeed made by... Well, there you go. See, Ray, I haven't led you astray, have I? Mate, you, you, you can go, go to the tip. All our dumps have been shut out here. Uh, there were some financial questions earlier. <laughs> yeah, I don't sort of get into that. That's, um... <laughs> Bit like asking what colour socks I wear. What were the financial questions? Only if I had a financial advisor, wasn't it? La dum dum buddy dum. Yeah, that's, that's a bad sign. How many, go on, be honest, how many people have gone to the tip and come back with more rubbish than you took? Yeah, I've done it. I'm guilty of it. Because people throw good stuff away, you know. I get rid of rubbish, but other people, oh, no. It's a lounge suite. Oh, it's got a dog hair on it. Bottle glue for woodworking. Glue bottle for woodworking. Oh, that's easy. Just use a sauce bottle. Just an ordinary dead horse bottle. Um, I haven't got one here, I think. They might be up in the... But I, in Australia, anyway, you can buy them cheaply. They're about $2 and you put tomato sauce in it. Or get a squeak, get a tomato sauce bottle that's got tomato sauce in it. Use the tomato sauce and then... Empty it out and put glue in it. That's it. G'day, Mike. I ask you to show us on a single board all the finishing differences. Shellac, tongue board, there, did he, did he, did I'd like to hear. Great about that. Okay, um, we can do it. We can definitely do it, and you can see the difference. In fact, we might do that right now because you won't see the difference until it's dried. Um, yeah, I'm just thinking, what do we got here? Oh, we use a little bit of Tassie oak. And oh, you've got no idea how nice this is not to have to go, yeah, got to do this, got to do that. Um, oh, wonder, what, I like the way you think, Devin, you see? <laughs> that the regulars, the stalwarts, they'd be going, oh, I wonder what lows he's going to hit on this one. But you come in, breath of fresh air, positive mental attitude, full of excitement. And dare I say naivety? 
which I appreciate. And we're going to hit heights. Hear that, people? We're going to hit heights today. Um, okay. So what was that you wanted? Hang on, let me write this down. We'll go shellac. Actually, pine might... No, oh, no, we'll see. Shellac. Tongue. Tongue oil. Mineral oil. Danish oil. You're lucky I've got all this stuff, aren't you? Um, I've got to remember where the... Mineral oil is just clear. So it's... Uh, yeah, we've got some of that. Hey, if it's not down here, it's up in the other shed. I might have to dash up there in a minute and get it. So there we go. Um, she just bought you home, Kate. Not from the dump, I hope, Trevor. What's the biggest bit of furniture you have ever made? Oh! Might have been able to show you a picture of that. If I could find my picture book. The biggest bit of furniture I've ever made was a conference table in St John's Cathedral, or it's next to St John's Cathedral in Brisbane. It's in St Martin's House and it sits 70 people. That is the biggest job that I have ever made. It was massive. It was made up of... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten tables, but they all interlocked. So you could sit 70 people on it. I don't know. I'll, I'll see if, I did see a photograph of it um, kicking around the other day with some other old pictures. I'm not really one for keeping tabs on jobs that I do. But let me have a look. Um, oh. da, 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 da. oh, I've got to show you this. Hang on, I'll just, just, just wait. I'll just go out here. Have a look, see. <coughs> ba -da -da. Oh, you rotten so-and-so. You. Oh, look what I just found. Oh, mate. Hey. Oh, bonus. Just found two tins of ready-made French polish. Some jade polish. And didn't, didn't find what I was looking for. But what a bonus. I knew I had those around here somewhere. I don't know. I'll come across it. It'll turn up. As we traverse jade oil, I've never seen. Oh, I've never seen that before. Jade oil. We've got to give that a bill. Where are we? There you go. Look at that. Jade oil. And I was looking for that the other day. So we'll give that a go. I think that'll be. Yeah, that'll be ordinary. She's like, look at this. I bought this ages ago at the big warehouse and I just thought, what a terrific bit of kit. So you're not allowed to carry pocket knives around, but could you carry a folding chisel? Because I reckon you could do a lot of damage with that. Isn't that great? You just have it in your whatever. I don't think the steel's all that brilliant. I, I must admit, I've, I've used it as a paint scraper. I think, oh, it must have sharpened the flats, back's flat. No, no brand on it. So, could be anything. Oh, hang on, no, wait a minute. It's called... Let's go over here. Stop the struggle, trademark. Fast cap, F-A-S... So fastcap, fastcap.com. There you go. Stop the struggle. 
awesome bit of kit. Oh, speaking of awesome bit of kit, I know I'm getting digressed again. I found these the other day because I, well, actually, Anthony cleaned one of the cars out. And uh, he said, oh, Papa, he said, I found your knife. I've shown these before, but I love these. Oppenel, one of my favourite knife brands. They are just extraordinary. That's a full set. Look, look at the number two. And they've got their self-locking and they're very, very sharp. Carbon steel, nothing super flash about the steel, but basically they haven't changed in over a hundred and something years. Lovely, lovely, lovely. And I thought I'm very happy with that set. And I got a couple of um, uh, um, spare ones because I use them for whittling and what have you. But then, then I found the big. <laughs> get, get a load of that. Is that a, is that is <laughs> is that a pocket knife or not? <laughs> I reckon. I'll tell you, it's sharp too. Well, let's see how sharp. I haven't sharpened it. This is. I bought it more for fun. There you go. It's a butter knife. My mate Stan Sigit. Sorry, Stan, I can't say. Stan Sigitlinski down at. Um, 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 where's Stan? Just out from Byron Bay. Billy Nudgel. Stan Sliginski from Billy Nudgel. G'day, mate, if you're watching. Uh, I was at his place one day and he gave, gave me some. Uh, bread and butter and said, make a sandwich. I said, I haven't got a butter knife. And he, he went away and got one of those. It was the first time I saw one. I thought, got to have one of those. And several years later, I went and got one. Awesome, awesome, awesome bit of stuff. Don't need a keyboard. Get away. Uh. So that's the biggest furniture job I've ever made. I'm up to there. Uh, oh, but we are positive. <laughs> oh, dear. Hey, can I moderate a moderator? Can I do that? Are I allowed? No, nah, Bob. Oh, wrong one. <laughs> oh, dear, I'm in trouble now. I thought it was the dog. It's not. It's the missus. <laughs> Hey, Chucky, don't look at me in that tone of voice. Here you go. Right. I, you know why I like coming down when she comes down here? Because for the public, she gives me a hug. <laughs> oh, I nearly stuck your eyeball out, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I don't need one, that one, do I? Don't you? I'll make a patch up for you. What do we got? Let me have a look. Don't, don't tell them. We'll have a look first. Oh, oh that's his show. Isn't it? Certainly, yeah. Okay, what else have you been doing? <laughs> no, we're not going to tell them. We'll leave them in suspenders. <laughs> Enjoy your suspenders. Shh. <laughs> don't, don't start, Prunella. <laughs> Here we go. This is, this is the one for today. Get your ugly mug out of there. Yeah. Be kind and loving and creative. How good is that? I love that. That should be the mantra of the show. Can we, can we have that as the, the tagline for the show? That's everyone out there. They've got to be kind, loving and creative. But to me, they're horrible, miserable and picky. But it's all right because I'm used to it. I've got kids. Right. Right? There you go. That's lovely. I love that one. Mm. So what are you going to do with all these? We're going to end up with 5,000 of them. I'm going to make... I haven't made up my mind whether I'm going to do quilt, blanket, or just wall hangings, just to um, make people feel good. Make a trifle then. Done that. Oh, you've yeah. done it. I've made the trifle. I've, I've done the jellies. I've had to go trifle. two days without a trifle. Yeah. I get withdrawal. I don't care if the booze shop's shut, but if they stop making jelly. Well, I'm going to have to get some more. No, so we can refine some of the glue up. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we just put a couple of the strawberry essence in it, a bit of colour. Won't know the difference. Bet you Bob would eat it. Yeah. He'd think it was... But I don't think I want to. <laughs> no, I won't tell you. I'll just... Yeah, that'll stick to your ribs and that'll be a hint. <laughs> I told them. Hey, wasn't I good last night? 
because I didn't have the <laughs> pressure of that deadline. Yes, I absolutely. just It was, oh. What did we watch? What was that movie? That movie, gee, it was good. What was it? I don't know, it's it about this girl that goes over to Africa and falls in love with this oh, African yeah. dude. Um, love. And it was on Netflix. Anyway, she comes back and her father's given her a hard time. She won't admit to her father that um, it didn't work out. So she finds this guy who needs a place to hide and asks him to pretend to be a um, fiancé, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Fiancé for a while and they end up getting married and then he fakes his own death and... Then the real guy. Then the real guy him. turns up, and then he turns. Oh, but it was a happy ending. It was funny. Yeah, it I was. was. Like, it really was, and it had unexpected twists and turns. Yes, absolutely. It did. So we are now off quarantine. Are you going yeah, to go up? I'm going to. Yeah, to okay. the shops. Yeah. All right. Um, Anthony's coming with me apparently. No, huh? he doesn't want to. But that's nothing unusual. Well, I don't know. That. I think you could push him in. Oh no, no. no. Hey, how are you going to do that? Three of you. Uh uh better than letting him go on the bus. No, that's only in Victoria. Oh, is it? I thought it was up here. You could only have two. No, I don't know. Oh, I don't think Anyone so. know in Queensland? Can you still have three people in the car? I wouldn't take the risk, though. Mm. If Angie wants to go, I'll go up with him this afternoon. All right. Yeah, he only wants to go. He'd be gay. No, but... You, excuse me, we're having a talk. <laughs> no, because it came up that... It was a what? thousand dollar fine if there was more than three people in the car. But Susie said that's in Victoria, but Queensland won't be too far behind. No. I'm no. not really quite sure of when that is effective from. There's Nebies up at Springfield, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah, I'll take him up to oh. Springfield. Tell him I'll take tell him Papa will take him up. Yeah, I think he's getting a bit cabin fever, yeah. Yeah, no, that's all right. Well that's all right. it's all right that we can go now. You can go for a yeah, walk yeah. up the coals if yeah. he wants. Yeah. So that's it. Right. So yeah, just tell him that. Say well, where, where have you saw that post? Yeah. Just say, well, mate, look at that. Or just Google it. Get John to mm. Google it. See, there you go. Hang on, we might even have an answer down here. No, no, no. We're only allowed one in a car in France. Wow. Well, any less than that, you're not going anywhere, eh? <laughs> that is limit two. There you go. Yeah. All right. Just All right. tell him to ring up Anastasia Palaszczuk. Yeah. Or suck it up and... No, nah, she's just doing she's whatever she's do doing. Um, yeah, no, tell him I'll take him All up. Right. The truck, I haven't taken the truck out for about five weeks. It'll forget how to work. Think of the petrol you're saving. Yeah, bonus. <laughs> that's, that's true. Isn't it? Doesn't, it, doesn't it burn your petrols down to $1.19, $1.15 or something? And I've got nowhere to go. So I've got all this cheap petrol. We should be stockpiling it. We'll get some big drums put in the backyard. Love you. Love you too. Oh, you're going now, are you? No. All right, no dramas. So I dare say we will have Anthony down here later on. Uh, today's words of wisdom. I like that. Muddy dee 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 dee. Oh, oh, HQ sound. I thought you said my sound was off. I'll, I'll check my batteries. No, no, we're still pushing twos. So that's good. G'day, T-Bone. Did you slide in and I missed you? Herbaslop, how you going, mate? That's a bumper sticker. I reckon it should be too. I might get onto Vistaprint and we'll turn that into a bumper sticker. Oh. Yep, I'm with you, Prunella. That's it. I'll, I'll, I'll get her to do that one too. That's nice. Be kind to yourself and look after... Oh, I say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, duh. Oh, it's all right. I'll keep taking the tablets. Uh. Oh, hello, Bob. Too bad they don't have one dog in the shop, Law. All right. Now, you can have to stay here for a while. I reckon Anthony would be down because... He'll be doing his head in staying up there. Uh, 
Hey, Jeff, how you going, mate? No, she, she's gone. Reginald, good morning. I've forgotten again, Wally. Yeah, that's, that's shocking, isn't it? One in the car in France. <whistles> Some like it hot. Oh, Tony Curtis, Marilyn Munro and Jack Lemon. Is that right? Oh. I'm not familiar with that movie, Prunella. Oh, thanks, Jeff. I didn't think you thought I was beautiful, but I'll take that on board. <laughs> oh, the beating talk. Yeah, I've got to find that. Um, did I tell you I was talking to Anthony the other day, Lee Nelson? He's doing okay. Uh, he's had to, like everyone else, they've had to stop teaching. But no, it's nice to have a chat and a catch up. And when he finally gets up here to Brisbane, we'll have a coffee together, no doubt. Michael, have you ever used a digital tool to design your product? A very, 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 very early in the piece, I tried to get, um, oh, it was Google 3D, and quite frankly, pencil and a bit of paper, and I can do a much better job because it's in my mind. I do, when I was doing, I took a year off woodworking. Here's something you might not know. I took a year off woodworking and did fabric art for a year and did some off-the-wall quilts, all uh, optical illusion, give your head a spin stuff, and there was a program I was using for that called EQ5, I think it was, and it was brilliant because you could actually make the design, scan in your own fabric and see exactly what it looked like before you started making it. But no, it would work in my head. There you go, what did I tell you? The lad's back. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. How you going, son? Good. That's good. Say good day to the people. Hiya. Get over here so you're in shot. Introduce yourself. You know it. Everyone knows No, we've got new people in. Really? Do you, do you mind? You're tall enough already. You don't have this crikey. Feel like I'm from the land of the Lilliputian standing next to you. <laughs> Going to call you Gulliver. <laughs> I'm gullible and he's Gulliver. There you go. This is my grandson, Anthony. Big strapping lad he is, all of 15 years old. Yeah. But he's a good lad. And he's going to read the chat. Is that what you're going to do? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, he might anyway. He enjoyed doing it yesterday, so he told me. Is that right? <laughs> there you go. All right. Michael, have you used digital? So, yeah, I'll answer that one. Yes, a short rendition of a classic tale of as old as Jack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, you're going to oh. Duck! How you going? You just missed mum. She just came in and left. And I've forgotten what they're saying today. Well, be kind to each other and be creative. That was it, yeah. Oh. oh you must be special, Duxy. Fair dinkum. We just get, hello, Brian. Hello, Stephen. Hello, Ray. You get, hello, Duxy. Oh, by the way, you've got to call her your Royal Highness from now on. Just in case, because we promoted her yesterday. She's queen of the moderators. Julian, g'day, mate. Oh, there you go. Julian says, good T-shirt, Anthony. <laughs> All right, don't be silly. It's, it's not. Tell them about the T-shirt. What happened? Where did you get the money for that? You. No, yeah, but you lent, borrowed it from me, but you had a job, didn't you? Yeah. And you earned the money. And he saw the T-shirt and he said... I saw the T-shirt, and I haven't got the money, but I've got it at home, but I'll get it on Sunday. So, I, I didn't charge you much interest either, did I? No. No, no, it's good. It was a cheap T-shirt. That only cost me three coffees whilst he's buying it. <laughs> there you go. So, anyway, was in the shop today and did a cardinal sin through our two box. Oh, mate, you'll miss it. You'll want it tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that the way? You can have something for 20 years. You throw it away the next day. Oh, I wish I had that. Wombat says, G'day, young fella. Chad says, Hi, Anthony. Jeff says, Anthony, if you want to do programming or hacking classes, tell that old geezer to call me. Oh, there you go. Well, <laughs> that's lovely. Duxy. Oh, dear, oh, dear. 
G'day, John. Oh, you got your right profile up today. <coughs> uh, yeah, that just had me, HQ. Uh, Anthony the Chat Man, that's what we'll call you. Anthony the Chat Man. All right. Um, what I was going to do, I've forgotten who asked. Now, Brian, no, was it? <laughs> who was it? It was someone. Um, oh. Was it Mike? Mike. There you go. Mike wanted to know what different stains look like. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going to wadge off um, some spacing and we'll put... Hey, listen, Don, can you go up to... Fresh shed? Yeah. Um, I think it's on my bench at the end of the shed. There is a... Just a bottle. Something like this? No, no. Looks like that. Got a white top and it's got clear fluid in it. It's not a poison bottle. It's sort of just like that with a white top and it's got a clear oil in it. If you can have, a, just have a look. If it's not there, it might be under the bench or wherever. It's there somewhere. Thanks, mate. <coughs> yeah, you have, mate, haven't you? <laughs> Oh, now. Now, what are we going to do? I, I don't think there's going to be much of a difference. We'll do, we'll do shellac. Okay, we're one, two, three, four. Five, two, three, four. Okay, do another four. G'day, Wayne. You're going... Oh, you're going shopping. Okay. Buy me some chocolate. And email it to me. Well, stay safe, have fun, and we might see you when you get back. Because I think we'll still be here. Oh, you honestly have <laughs> no idea how nice this is not to have to do something. All right. Oh, you're a champion. Yes. No, that was that was the one I was looking for, and I was totally wrong with the bottle, wasn't I? Yeah, but it doesn't matter. See, because you're a good lad. You're an observant young man. Okay, you go around there, and you can you you comfortable reading all that? Okay, even followed you when you... Oh, I made that with the... I should, I've still got 10,000 followers on Twitch, apparently. Um, I don't know, do you want to get a seat or are you happy just... I'm happy Okay, all right. Well, well, well I want to do a, a box top. How many sides on that? Eight. See? See? Count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Oh. There you go. Don't see many seven-sided boxes, do you? <laughs> so we'll do. <laughs> oh dear. No, you're staying in here, Bob. Don't care. All right. Now, what have we got? We got shellac. We have shellac. Um, I've got some garnet lac here too. I think somewhere. Here we go. We've got some garnet lac. Got some black lac. We've got some blonde shellac. So there you go, there's a couple of different shellacs. All by the LeBron. Oh, what one? All from the LeBron bottles. That's it. We've got tongue oil. Read that list out, mate. Tongue oil. What oil. else was there? Danish oil? Yeah. Boiled linseed oil. I was looking for that too. Oh, I can't believe that was sitting there. What? Oh, I was looking for French polishing oil the other day. Raw linseed oil. Oh. Tongue oil, burnishing cream. Got that, got that, got that. Should be some finishing oil in here somewhere. Teak oil. Oh, what's that one? Danish oil, teak oil. Raw linseed. Okay. 
All right, so we'll do the oils first. Might have to write what they are. Oh, no, we can do that on the side, can't we? It's very good. We'll go this, this way. So we'll go tongue. Captain Ken, welcome, mate. Boiled linseed. Raw linseed. Tongue oil. Teak oil. Danish oil. Mineral oil. Jade oil, I don't think they make. Um, and French polish will go garnet. Um, there you go. We'll go that way there. So, start off with tongue oil. This is a really, really thick oil. Um, it, I, I personally don't think it penetrates as well as the thinner ones like uh, Danish or... I do have another finishing oil. Where's that one for? Oh, there we go. I'm not hiding it. You want sorry? Ray wants me to hide one of your planes. Oh. He's a good lad, you won't corrupt him. These rags, they're just oh, they work and some you can rip and some you can't. I'm getting, I'm either getting weak or these rags are conspiring against me, mate. Okay. Tongue oil will be the first one. Started coating, mate, you've got to keep me up to date with these if you're going to do it. I don't care if you don't want to do it, that's fine, but you just got to let me know what. Okay, so that's tongue oil. Next one. Do you want a close up shot, Papa? No. Show me wrinkles off. <laughs> tongue oil. Um, boiled linseed will do next. There you go, that better? Much more better? Yeah, well, that's, uh, I shared that the other day. Um, this is Bored Linseed. That cedar is a very soft timber, but if you use kerosene, it uh, swells the fibres up and it's easier to work, which is an old wood carver's trick. Okay, that's boiled. Actually, can you just put these back over there when I finish with them? Up on the top shelf? Yeah, if you can, yeah. Top. 
Um, And I'm not cross-contaminating any of these, so I'm using a nice different bit of cloth each time. Stay there. No, no, stay there. Finishing oil, um, from what I can make out, is very, very similar to um, Danish. It might dry a little bit quicker. And therefore, it's a lot thinner. It penetrates a lot more. There you go. Oh, hang on. Teak oil. I don't use that much anymore. It was very much in vogue in... Um, I'm sick of these childhood locks. In the 70s, when you had all that Scandinavian furniture coming in. And a lot of the Chiswell stuff also. Um, Parker. Slightly darker, but you really wouldn't notice it. Light dark. Oh, it's just very. See, see, it's darker there on the rag. Uh, there you go. Teak. Um, and. Danish. Oh, I just thought perhaps, perhaps finishing is Finnish prunella. It's, it's, it's coming out in competition with um, Danish. Multi tool. There you go. Where's a nice clean bit of rag? And, boom, boom, boom. and last but not least, mineral. I'll tell you what, I can't tell the difference. I see tongue oil seems to be a bit darker than anything else. Mineral oil is definitely the clearest. There you go. Okay, now we're um, uh, No, leave it down here. Whoop. Can you just pick that bit up? Oh, I don't know. Oh. Did you find it? Yeah. Good lad. There we go. I don't know what this French polish is like because I've never used it before. Can you give me that rag down, please? <coughs> Thank you. Oh. No, Bob, give it a miss. You're not going out. Why? Because you told me to leave the gate open? No, I just don't want him going out just in case. Okay. Just wondering. That's all right. So that's ordinary shellac. What, are going to use these two? No. Nah. Now, this is DOX Blonde. Oh, around here, you can smell it anywhere, mate. Yep. <laughs> it smells like your fridge down there. Probably because that's what you 
Uh, yeah, I'll just keep it in the fridge. That's what it smells like. That, that's why the fridge smells like that. That's right. Okay, that's de wax. Uh, this is garnet, which they use on Victorian uh, antiques. <coughs> is that garnet? Yeah. Um, so you might have a look up there. I think there's a black one. Bottle. Oh, there we go. Is that it? No, it's garnet. What's that one there? They did have, or I did have, I don't know where it's going now. Um, there's a bottle similar to that, only it was black. No. <clears throat> it was black shellac. Oh. Yeah, it's a greeny sort of black. It's meant to be more of a red, but anyway. Um, You've been seeing that for too long? No. Nah. That's it. So we've got tongue oil, boiled linseed oil, tongue oil, boiled linseed oil, raw linseed oil, finishing oil, teak oil, Danish oil, mineral oil, shellac, de-wax blonde shellac, and garnet lac, and that's meant to be a black one, but I can't find that. So we'll just leave that for a while and then we'll pull the tape off and see if we can tell the difference. If you can take all that stuff back up, that would be awesome. Um, card scraper, how to sharpen the card scraper. All right, we'll do that one. Boom. There's a couple of ways you can do them. Um, one is uh, just with a, oh, one of these things and a file, if I can find a file. There you go. A burnisher and a file. That handle, Theo made me that handle. That's nice. It's called Cooktown Ironwood, that stuff. Let me just cap, catch up before we, before we go any further. Money, da, da, da. I'm not over there to do the chat. Eh? Hey? Yeah, no, that's all right. You can come back over here whenever you... Oh, I'm going to be in the... So you'll have to do it for me to standing there, if you want. Um, so I can look over. Or... I was going to say, get another computer and we could... Got a spare place and I can bring mine down. Yeah, you, you your Wi-Fi, would you... Uh, is this connected to the home Wi-Fi? Yeah. Well, no, it, it's connected uh, via an internet cable. So I don't know. No, it might not. Does, um, actually, let's try my phone. Actually, yeah, it should appear up on your phone. Chat the well, here you, you You try and work it all out. Uh... A14. Yeah. See if you can get the chat up. It's up. Is it? Oh, look at that. Well, you can sit down there and you can call out for me. There you go. Alfredo, welcome. Yeah, tongue oil takes a long time because it's so thick. Morning, Nada. How are you? Welcome back to the workshop. Mmm. All right, today is everyone's day. You want to know anything? <laughs> if I can do it, I'll do it. Right now we're going to do how to uh, sharpen a card scraper. Let's try and find one that needs sharpening. And we'll look at different, yeah, that was, different types of scrapers. Oh, 
All right. Uh, I'll, I'll, get, I'll do this one for Tezza. Oh, Derry Agency, Gordon, that's a scraper. Uh, da -da 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 -da. That's a scraper. All right. Hmm? He could use a chisel, I guess. That is a Bailey a Stanley scraper. It's called a number 80. Looks very much like a spoke shave, but it's not. They get ground at 45 degrees. And then this um, little turnbuckle here. There you go. This little turnbuckle here you screw in and it actually flexes this plate here and then that gives you, as you can see in there, a curve at the bottom and that's got a 45 degree hook on it and you use that on big jobs, so on a table or something like that, <coughs> you would just push it down and you know push it away and it will scrape. The other thing you can use is an H&T Gordon plane for scraping any of Terry's planes. Now his normal plane setup is that. I was using that as a scraper. Okay, his normal plane setup is the same as any other plane. It's bevel down. So if you're gonna use it as a plane, bevel down, but if you want, you can take that out, turn it so it bevels up, and that then will give you a scraper. So you can use that as a scraper as well. There are various types of scrapers. There's, it's a gooseneck scraper, hence funny shape for doing con, uh, concaves and a bit of convex here on the inside. They're an absolute shocker to sharpen, but basically you sharpen it the same way as I'll show you on a flat one. That's one I use for box making. It's just a little piece of blade off my thicknesser. And I use that very effectively for getting... I'll just cut, cut a bit of blade out. That's all. And that's good for just getting glue spots off. These card scrapers, I think these are Marple's ones. They're the most common type. My, oh, here's another one that's, again, I use on guitars when we start making the necks, that part you scrape on the underside of the neck and then you use that on the flat side. If you've got any concaved bits, you use this part of the scraper. My preferred scraper are these, Barco. They used to be called Sandvik, but I think they're all Barco now. That's Barco, that's, yeah, they're all Barcos. Um, I use this more than anything else, so we will sharpen one of these. This one is blunt. Let me see if I can get something to show you. It's blunt. Let me put all this stuff away first. Just checking up. I oh, know Anthony's reading it, and I'm just checking it too. There was one at the bottom wondering what thickness. And I'll get there. Um, oh, good on you, Ken. If you didn't bring enough to share, you shouldn't be having it. Yeah, stainless, um, I don't know. Stainless is hard to work. 
I like just spring steel. That's what this stuff is. What's that? Uh, 1040 or 1041 or something or other? Yeah, what done? I, I said I don't know either. Okay, all right. So, let me put all this stuff away. Oh. A file, a burnisher. A burnisher can be an old file that doesn't have any uh, teeth left in it, a hardened bit of steel. I'll show you how to do it with that one, but then I'll show you my, my preferred one because I can set it. And a piece of chalk. Oh, mate, you use chalk for everything. It's always coming in handy. All right. So we'll see how well this works at the moment. I don't think it's going to work very well at all. Whoops. Oh, yeah, yeah, old man noise. you do something. What are you, which one are you up to? I'm up to the bottom one. Okay, what does it say? Anthony, put those last two finished pins away. Oh! Yeah, thanks, Mike. Mike, you get up him. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Hokey dokey. <laughs> no, you see? That's it. Oh, oh this is, <laughs> I'm going to have to drill some more holes in this bench one day. We'll use this one. Where's the square bottle? La -de -dum -bum -ba -da -bum. Come round to here. There you go. Bit of water in there so this doesn't slip. And we'll see if this is working, and I don't think it is. Okay, not getting anything at all. So, put it in the vice, thus, as Julius Sumner Miller would say. How many people remember Julius Sumner Miller and a glass and a half? Okay. First things first, flatten the top. What I do is put chalk on the file. That way it's easier to clean your file because the chalk fills up the lands, but when you're using it, the filings depress the chalk. And then when you have finished, all you gotta do is do that, and a lot of it cleans out. And of course, if you're gonna use a file, make sure you've got a file card as well. That's a file card, a lot of little pins, and that really cleans your file out. But if you've got the chalk in there, you'll find it cleans out a lot better. That's got a little bit of metal stuck in there, just that little silver bit. So obviously I didn't have chalk down there when I was using that. So that's the way to look after your files. First things first, flatten off this top. Oh, hang on, hang on, I've got it done, yeah. If I had a die grinder, a thin curved blade can make a decent scraper too. Yeah, any high carbon steel. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Old saws are brilliant. Old hand saws, they're great for them. 
Well, we've got a lot up here. Um, -da -da, found the name I was looking for. It just takes the time. There we go. And Steve is right. You have to work stainless quick. And I've I've tried to forge it in the, the forge. Yeah, it is tough. It is tough. It takes a long time to heat up, and it loses its heat really quickly as well. File the company I was thinking about. Make good carving tools. You got, oh, just just happened to have a, a a couple of them there, duck. There you go. It is. We've got a couple of rolls. There you go. No, they're good. Uh, there we go. Okay. So, dress. Dress the top off. And then I just cut it down there to make sure you haven't got a hook left. Get that nice and flat. Don't rub too hard because you cut your fingers. And then with your um, burnisher, I, I use it, you can use any bit you like. I, I like using the narrow bit if you look at the shape of it. I like using this narrow bit because I'm getting more force on that. And you push down and go straight across. Here's a trick. When you come off, you're going to smash your knuckles. So <laughs> try not to do that. And you're pushing down. And what you're actually doing, the number of times I've come off there and got that in the hand is not funny. What you're actually doing is creating a spread. You're spreading out. That nice uh, flat surface you've just done with your file until you feel a little bit of a hook coming up. Ow! Didn't get me hand, but I've got my finger. You can take a few rubs, but then you'll just feel it coming over the edge. Then, hey? Now, the gloves don't stop you from squashing your fingers. Now, depending how big you want your hook, you either have the blade that far over or that far over, and then you just give it a, a rub like that. Just a quick one. And you'll feel a hook actually coming up. Then if you've done it both sides, you do the same on the other side. And we'll see how we go. If we made any difference. If not, you just bring the hook over a bit more. Work out what side I did. There you go. This possibly isn't the best one to do it on. I would like to be getting shavings out of that, not dust. So, what I'll do, I'll use this, which I much prefer, and we'll use it on the other side. These, Veritas still make these, I think they're, they're plastic now though, and what they are is a tungsten rod at an angle. So you put that in there, you set it at zero, like that, tighten it down, then your hand's covered, you can go straight over. Hang on, we'll clean that up first. Set it at zero and go straight over the top with a nice load of downward pressure. That gives you a reasonable hook. 
And I like setting mine at 90 degrees, uh, 10 degrees, or 15 degrees, sorry. So you just turn that knob there. Oh no, 10 degrees, we'll have 10 degrees. And then you go once or twice on that side. And then go 10 degrees on the other way. And that'll do the other side. And that gives you a much better, I think, a much better hook. Okay, here we go. Get a decent bit of timber that we can maybe use, or a better bit of timber. What's that? Here we go. I just can't get a decent shaving off just to make sure that timber will work. That's the shaving I want, so I'm just going to have to work on this one a little bit more. Uh, the grind might need a complete regrind, I think. All right, I'm I'm going to persevere with this. I'm going to do a complete regrind on it. Actually, if you can, what's the time? I was going to say, can you go and check, see if Nanny did shut the gate, yeah. and see if the mailman's been, then you can let him out. That would be good. 
and then come back down here. Oh, no, I'm going to use this because I trust this one. That's feeling better. <sighs> there you go. So I just had to really bring that right back. And that's what you're looking for. Nice shavings like that. That's the one we just sharpened. And that's one we haven't sharpened, but it's pretty new. So there you go. I hope that one answers that question. We took the long way around it. I tried to do a quickie, but it didn't happen. I had to do it all totally again. Oh, uh, what do you want? Round and hollows. I think that was another one. Uh, Father, come in. Good morning. G'day, Max. How are you? Yeah, very same, exactly the same thing, uh, Julian. And I do, if I'm using a scraper on the lathe, a lot of people say, hey, take the burr off. Now leave the burr on because it does a lot of cutting. And you'll find if you use a scraper instead of sandpaper, you won't get grain rise when you put a finish on. Oh. Okay, so we'll put these ones away. You still there, Ray? Say hi if you are and I'll do the rounds and hollows. If not, we'll move on to something else. to make uh, coffee. Oh, good. <laughs> uh, what it done. Come down too, it's all shut. Yeah, yeah. Had the mailman been? Uh, there was no mail. Oh, okay. Yes, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're going to come and say hello? Come on. This is my other grandson, Noah. Aren't you? Yeah. You're a good kid. Of course, I'm a good kid. Oh, that's there you are. If I had known grandkids, grandkids would be here today. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, that's not possible, Father. Oh. Without time to come. Do you know, have you ever had kids that don't have a sense of humour? Yes. Oh, yeah, I know. I'm living with two. Oh, yeah, one. Right one. All right. Right there. Um, Ray is still here. Oh, good. Yeah, right, eh? All right, mate. We'll do the rounds and hollows. Hang on. Just... Card scraper we done. We haven't done that, we've done that, we've done that. Different finishes we've done. Um, G 
go and grab the camping chairs up next to the um, water heater or get another, get one of the stools out of the wood turning shed if you want. Whatever you feel like. That was nice if you give your chair up for your brother even though yeah, he stole he it. it. Yeah, I know. There you go. People saying good day, Noah. Good day. Prunella says, hi, slugger. There you go. I don't see why you couldn't use a card scraper on the lathe, except it's going to get very hot very quickly. We had Theo t turning something using a, a, a butt chisel once. Not... No, it's it's a small, short... You should see the look I'm getting from that butt chisel. Oh, there's no toilet paper. They made chisels now. Honestly, no, really, truly. It's terrible. He's all gone shy now. Yeah. Uh, where's Bob? Oh, he just left Mitch. No, he'll be back. You tell it hanging there. He'll be back. Yeah, he'll be back just for food. He will. Mm -hmm. Can you keep your feet still, please? Thank you. Yeah, you never know, mate. It changes from day to day. Mate, after five sons, they do, I'm telling you. Yeah. Hi, Sam. Hey, well, there you I just... I'm looking, where's Sam? And I found him. Oh, there you go. Update on the coyote. What was left this morning was just the evidence that he was here. Nothing to pick up. Oh, poor little thing. No, that's it. If he's eating your chooks, that's no good, is it? That's Noah, duck. Noah's the one with the pink shirt on. Spider Gwen shirt. Sp what is it called? Spider Gwen. But Spider Gwen shirt, just an update there for the uninformed. Yes. <laughs> what would you uh, see? What would you recommend for someone that's starting with woodworking? Do I have to buy a table saw, a track saw, or for precision cuts? No, we, we'll actually do that. We'll use a hand plane. Um, so stay in there. HQ, what I'll do, what am I doing now? Oh, I'm just going to sharpen a, a round and a hollow and uh, then I'll show you how to get precision cuts. There you go. Uh, ouch. If you're going to talk, you've got to talk out there because if you're going to hug you, it's not good on a street. Why not? That's it. Okay. Good. There you go. That's the granddad. Ouch. I just cut myself. Please don't cut yourself. Too late. I already have. Okay, Look, real blood. Oh, what? It was. It wasn't through design, I tell you. I know that. Oh, I needed the hammer. Here we go. Now, if you've got a, a Stanley 45, same, same deal, or a 50. So I've got a 45 over here somewhere. I think, I don't know if it's here or... There you go. Nah, it's just right, I'm just... Getting this 45 out. Whoops. There we go. There we go, sir. I don't know what I've got in there. Now I've got a flat one in there for rebates. But if you've seen these around, oh, well, that's handy. What? The cutters aren't in it. I wonder where they've gone. Let me, I'll just go and have another look. 
Oh, there they are. The other side of the box. Here we go. There you go. See, so if you've got one of these setups with that type of cutter in it, this is the same thing. Don't annoy your brother, Noah. I'm not. I said, don't annoy him. Hitting him on the head is annoying him, believe me. Uh, all right. Yeah, and you thought I was stressed when I had to do those boxes. Good on me. All right, here we go. Right, now these, now that's a hollow, and that will make a round shape, and that's a round, and that makes a hollow shape. So it's called round and hollows on the shape of the blade, not the profile that it gives. So we'll do the round first and for that again I would use a tormic but if you don't have a tormic or a cold wet water stone here's how I do it on an oil stone the rounds are pretty easy see like see, I wasn't lying to you look where's that see look that real real blood ah uh, there we go. Noah is an awesome name. We're going to name our boy, but all the girls here, even my dog's a girl. I'm so outnumbered. Mate, look, I've, we've got five boys, myself and Bob, one female, and we're still outnumbered. Yeah, and that's the chorus from the kids. They know the score. Okay. All right. <laughs> Just from how I act. Oops, what was that not? There we go. Okay, a little bit of kerosene on there. Try not to get it all over the place. Normally I've got a drip bottle I'll put it on with. But the same as what we did the other day with... See, we go all cams here. with um, doing the plain blade by hand. You bring it up until you're touching, the cutting edge is touching the stone. And by bringing it up just a fraction, you'll see a discoloration coming up where the oil's coming through. And then you start on one end, end like this, and as you go, you roll. I'll see if I can get a camera over there and show you exactly what I mean. Okay, so I'm starting here, bringing it up. <coughs> I'm leaning, I'm not going to use my arms. I'm going to lean like that. That way I'm going to maintain the same angle. So you bring it up. And as you lean forward, you just rotate it to the other corner. <coughs> so start there, rotate it to the other corner. If you want to use all your stone. I would do it that way rather than pulling it towards me because there you run the risk of doing this. So you just start there, go over. You can always put um, a bit of uh, texture on there to see how you're coming up, but you can see that shiny where that's been rubbing. Then the important thing is just to take the back off, just like that. 
and then you give it a light going over just to take any burrs off. And that then, the test I do is put it on your fingernail like that. If it grabs and doesn't slide off, if it's slid off, it's not sharp. Just the weight of the blade, if it catches, that's sharp enough. Now, same thing with the hollow. I flatten the back off. And if you were going to do one of these ones out of a 45, same thing. Flatten the back off. These are slightly different because they've got shoulders on them. But I'll just see if I can find... Um, what am I looking for? There we go. Whoops. Now, my preferred weapon of choice for doing these is one of those. It's an easy lap, diamond file, or they've got really small ones. That one's a tapered one, and that one's a flat one. It's actually uh, flat and round, it's for fish hooks, but it comes in handy. So, all, And if you haven't got one of these, what you can then do is get a bit of dowel to the size of whatever bit that you know, let's try this in without a tag on it. The size of the diameter of whatever the blade is you're trying to sharpen. So that's pretty close to that there. And then all you do is get a bit of 800 or 1000 grit. What do we got here? 1000 grit. So that's a 1000, whoops. 1,000 grit, wrap it around the dowel, where are you off to? Back up to the house. Yeah. Alright. See ya. See ya. Leave the chocolate biscuits alone. I'm not going to touch them. I was the one who had the livestock chocolate last night. Yeah. He's the one who touches them. I Hey, excuse me, who pinched another caramel this morning? Yeah, right. You think I can't count? Yeah. He gave me one and I took another one. Yeah, right. Okay. But he's overly, he likes him more. It's to get out of here. All right, we'll be out soon, matey. Just be good. So, yeah, right. Now, with that, you can just rub it up and down. Make sure the back is in contact and the front's in contact. And just give it. Where are we going? A rub up and down like that. Oh, actually, you can hold this still and move the stick up and down. And then I would just bring it forward just a little bit, bring the, the tail back so you're going to get a burr. And then as soon as you feel that very, very slight burr on the end, go back over to your stone and just take that burr off. If you've got leather, strop, just give it a rub on the strop and around the inside there, if you can. It's quite easy to make a round strop if you had to. Now the difference between these and the, the uh, 45s, exactly the same thing, where you can use this on the 45. But then you've got two shoulders here. So that, you sharpen that the same way as a straight blade. Put it on the stone, pick it up, get the discoloration, lean forward, Give it a couple of even strokes and then flatten all of it off in one go. 
and that'll sharpen those. So that's round and hollow. Snipe bills I'll do later on, but we'll set these up to see if they're going to work now. Where's my hammer? A little bit too much. Very much too much. Might be about right. And I did all that and you didn't see it. There you go. That's a nice round work in there. Um, let's see if we can get a hollow working. Bevel down. Put the wedge in. And you want it so it's, it's just, only just coming out the bottom. It's a little bit too much there, but for the purpose of the exercise, I think it'll be okay. run first. There you go. That's a hollow. So that's how you sharpen rounds and hollows. What's the difference between? That, that, that shape plane yeah. and our ones like this. Well they, they're just doing a straight edge, a flat edge, and these do. That's a hollow one and that's a, a round yeah, I'm one. I'm talking about why is it flat and got a hole in the middle. Well that's the extraction port for the... We don't normally take a shaving as thick with those planes as you do with these, but that is just the same as those throats in those planes. Huh. So there you go. Okay. Yep. Oh, oh, shoot. Oh, all right. Where, where are we up to now? I don't know. What's that? Uh, Prunella. Yeah, and they're extinct, so is Australia Post. And I, I tell you what, I'm going to have a rant here. I hate it. They come up and they give you a parcel uh, that, you know, you ordered last year and it sort of arrives. And then they send you an email and say, oh, your parcel's just arrived. How did we do? Well, here's a clue. You got paid to do a job. You didn't do it particularly well. It did turn up and that's it. What do you want me to say? Oh, no, it was wonderful. I'm indebted to you for the rest of my life. Get over yourself, Australia Post. You're paid to do a job. Do it, shut up and move on. And get quiet a bike so you don't upset me dog. All right, rant over. <laughs> oh, and the other thing that really annoys me is, you know, they, they meant if you've got a sign for it, they'll beep. They go, beep, 
and then take off at 100 miles an hour and I have to drive into town and pick up a parcel that someone paid to get delivered to my place? Yeah. Oh, he's off again, isn't he? Oh, must be something in the hair tonic. Oh, where's that going? There we go. I'll put that oh, aside and we'll put that away later. Oh. Yeah, I tell you what, I bought stuff on China and it's arrived within a week. I've ordered stuff out of Melbourne and it'll take two weeks. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, I tell you, I'd shake them up. You lot could be my cabinet every time we have a session. I'll just do a live stream and we can solve the problems of the world. How's that? Awesome. Okay, where's me? Round and hollows with a moving philister. Where's me moving philister? We'll actually use that. Here's me. Look at that, it's got dust on it, Ray. There's my. There's me pride and joy. A moving philister. Moving philister. That is just, that's the plane, people. That's, that's the plane. Just got to be happy with that. Hang on, let's move me. I, I should have that there. There you go. Moving philister plane. I just, I just love that. All handmade. Terry makes that. And all done by hand. Well, when I say by hand, it's hand, the threads are cut on a lathe, but it's cut on a lathe with somebody operating it. It's not a CNC. Although he has got a CNC now and he's doing his vices, of which I have one on my bench up in the wood turning shed, which is gorgeous. I'd love to get one of his planes, uh, vices. Well, there you go. You still got to do a video for Mike on your bandsaw. There you go. We'll have to give Mike a ring later on, see what's happening. Uh, easy lap ones look cheap enough. Yeah, look, I think they're about $45 I paid for mine. Chocolate biscuits. Oh, that's what we need. We should have chocolate biscuits. No, then I can't talk with my mouth for. Where do you, hang on. Where do you tap to make the blade? Oh, okay. Oh, that's all I can show you better on one of these. Oh. So to get it out, to make it go back, you tap on the back of the plane. So that's not moving. That's there. But if you go like that, that's it. So to retract the blade, you tap at the back. To promote the blade, you tap on the blade. I'll set that up and um, we will, where's a bit of, oh, what's that stuff? Get a little crack at doing that. Put some water on it, don't be lazy. Those of you who don't know, that's to stop it from slipping. Put the water in there. That will not slip. Okay, now to set Terry's planes up, just get a block of anything flat. Uh, let's go there. So anything flat. Blade in. See how sharp this is? It's not bad. Blade in, bevel down. That's the bevel down. I just give it a bit of a shake. Then you put the wedge in. What got there? There you go. Can you hear it chatter? And I'll get there. 
hear that chatter? I push it back and then bring it forward just so it chatters ever such a little bit. Put the wedge in, knock the wedge down. Then you have a look down there to see how much blade is out. That is too much blade, but we'll do a cut with it anyway. Make sure the wedge is in. And we'll just take a cut and it's going to be pretty thick, I think. You can hear that. And that's thick. So by looking down here and tapping the back, what I've got, I've got my finger, where are we? My finger's holding the wedge and I'm tapping back here. There you can see, just by pulling that blade back, I'm getting a much thinner blade. It does, a it, uh, thinner shaving. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but in the, in the main, once you've um, mastered it, they are just so easy to use. So let's see if we can get this. Straight off. A little bit too strong. There you go. So that's how easy it is to use them. And in all honesty, I reckon once a, if you're doing a, a lot of work with it uh, in a production sense, I think it's quicker than messing around with the laterals and the depth setting on the frog on a normal plane. But that's just me. Ah, where are we up to? Oh, I'm waiting on a pass. Do, 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 do. Would you, you, funny you should mention that, Max. Here we go. Here you go. Here's a big Matheson. It's amazing what I got in this shed, I tell you. Um, it's big, isn't it? It's a lovely one, this. And these, these also, oh, all these ones up above Terry's, they're all Matheson's as well. They were... The ones I used before I started using Terry stuff, but I love Terry's. All right, let's let's give this one a go, Maxie. I don't know how long it's going to take to get out. Cause there we go. All right. This one I use uh, if I've got to remove a lot of timber. Someone asked me about a table saw. We'll do that in a minute too. This is the one I use if I've got to remove a heck of a lot of timber in a very short space of time. And I'm using a hand plane. Same thing. Here we go. Put the blade in the throat. Put the wedge in. Tap it down. Have a look. See how much blades out. What? They're picking on your shit. Are they? Yeah, because you'd be lucky to find a one metre plank in here. Oh no, that would be someone else talking about their shit, I'd say. All right. It says he'd be lucky to. Let me guess, Jeff. Yes. All right, here we go. We'll whack a bit of. Wax on the back of that. You'd be surprised how clean it is, Jeff. And here we go. The big fella. 
Okay, we need a bit more out. I prefer to use... Oh, that's too heavy. I prefer to use a wooden mallet because um, the metal ones, if I use a hammer, it wrecks things. Let's try that. No, no, blades are on. Too much there. Too loose. Too loose. So what do you need up the anyway? Oh. There you go. Possibly could de do with a bit of a sharpen. But that's the same principle, Max. Well, you want to go up to EB's. So I thought I might as well go up myself. There you go. Hey? They are. I like them. Then you got, then you're the other end of the scale. You got this big fella, the Lee Nelson number eight. And if I had a choice of using that Matheson or this one, I'm telling you, I wouldn't have to think too hard because this is the one I would use. Oh, actually, um, yeah, someone asked me about table saws. I'll, I'll have a look, see what we're up to. So we've done that, we've done that. What else have we got here? Joints, were, oh, wax and putty repairs. All right, let's do some of those. Um... Whenever you're doing a putty repair, always remember it has to be darker than the timber you're repairing. I'll just see if I can find a bit of scrungy stuff. You go over there and wave at them. Too bad. Okay, we might use that bit. Hang on, I'll just dress this up. Okie dokie. I think you'll. 
I've been replying through chat. Oh, have you? Yeah. Oh. I've got my... Oh, well, you can get involved with it doing it that way. Yeah. Uh, Prunella, uh, which reminds me, do you still have that? Oh, look, look, look. Yes, I do. There you go. Still got. <laughs> Just call me Heidi. Yeah, and we're gonna we're gonna um, put those in resin when we get around to it. These are an interesting thing. No, I'm not making any of these again. I refuse to make. I've made so many of them over them, but they're not. They're a nice. Um, God, when they open. They're a nice thing to make. That'll test, that'll test your skill level, I tell you. Uh, I do have a video of how to make those. I think it's over six parts. Uh, what's it called? What's the pencil case called? Like a check? Um, don't know. Just look up pencil cases on the channel. It's a uh, sliding lid or... I don't know. I forgot what it's called. Swivel, could be, I don't know. Mm. Oh, was I, Trevor? Yeah, that was a couple of years ago. Yeah, I used to enjoy doing that. I tell you what, I used to get through some timber too. <laughs> Terry said to me afterwards, he said, I thought I worked at a show. He said, I don't make near the amount of shavings you do. <laughs> yeah, they were good times. I used to like going out with Terry on the, the shows and um, doing the Lost Trades. There you go. The Lost Trades Fair. I used to enjoy doing that. Um, you bought what? I want to go to one of the Lost Trades shows. Oh, I'm not doing them anymore. He's, uh, he's, Terry's daughter, Tamaris, is doing them with um, Bede. So, not as much fun. But you never know. You never know. Yeah. Uh, Old school pencil case. That's it. Could be. Yeah, make sure it's sharp. <laughs> that one wasn't sharp. Yeah, no, they're easier if they're smaller, believe me. I did have a... Oh, here you go. I've got these, this one here, but this is a... Um, this is a toothing plane. <laughs> totally different vegetable again. This is an ECE. Toothing plane, and what that is used for, that's got a button on the back so you can hit that with a metal hammer. That's what that's designed for. And this is if you're, um, it's set, that's the way I use it. If you are doing a lot of veneering and you have to abrade the uh, substrate to get a better adhesion, that's what you use. You see those grooves in there? And that gives you very fine lines and it abrades the substrate. So then when you put your glue on, particularly high glue, it, you've got little peaks and valleys and it acts like a, a suction thing. You get a much better cohesion. But there's a word for the day, isn't it? Cohesion. cohesion. There you go, you get a better cohesion between your substrate and your veneer. So that same thing goes bevel down. Papa. Yes. How would you sharpen a very narrow veneering chisel? How would you sharpen a very narrow veneering chisel? What is a veneering chisel? Oh, I'm interested. Well, I, I, the, the smallest one I've got, let me just get this back in its place. Uh, 
There's nothing worse than when I want to go and use a tool that I know is set and I grab it and it's not set. It, it's annoying. I'll show you in a tick and then we'll move on to some waxing in that. Okay, that's way... Oh, that's not too bad, I suppose. No, nah, that'll do. Okay. If you can see that... You can go diagonally, however... And what it does, it breaks the surface up, so it's not shiny. That's not a good shot, but it actually has lines all the way along that. And that's what that little fella's used for. The other one next to it I can't use. I bought it because I wanted to try it out. That actually is a dovetailing plane. But... It's only good for right-handers, and it will only cut the tail. It won't cut the sockets. So there you go. Double oh. area Um. Oh, yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, it does give you a little bit extra area for the glue, but it's that suction effect that really helps um, I'm off to bed see you Chad good night we say good night Chad said good night to you did he? he did he's gone Julian Anthony what is your favorite MAGA anime manga anime well uh, did you answer it? I answered oh, it. Oh, you did. Oh, all right. No, that's all right. Sit back down. I had to go and check our own mum. My, my grandkids are either married or not. Yeah, I don't know what the go is with kids at the moment. I wish mine had come back. This. Are you watching? I wish you'd come back to Brisbane. Oh, carving chisels. Okay. Uh, oh, dear. Here we go. Let's. It's turning out to be a lot more sharpening episode. Yeah, well, you've got to have sharp tools to do stuff. Um, where is my smallest chisel? Ba -bum. Oh. Interesting. I've got a two mil chisel here somewhere. Let's that put that in. Hmm, could be. I don't know. Doesn't matter. We'll we'll find something there to go. Oh, there it is. There it is. I got it. That is tiny. It is. It goes there. What's that one doing in there? Pretty much. Oh, that was the other thing I didn't show, which you can use for. Um, I don't know where that one. Doesn't matter. Um, slip stones. And you use those on carving chisels as well. Oh, I if I can find mine. I haven't used them for yonks. Yonks and yonks and yonks. And it looks like they're... Oh, while I'm over here in this corner, I'll see if we've got any glass. Ah, here's, here's my slip stones. <laughs> Didn't find any glass, but I found my slip stones. I don't use these very much at all now since I've got the Tormek, but this is what you used to use in the old days. When sharpening knives? No, no, when sharpening... Um, ra uh, hollows. See, that's a tapered. It's got a mould and maggoty stuff on it now. But same thing, you just get your chisel and you move your stone 
up and down like that. And what you want to do is get a little bit of water coming over the back of your chisel. That way you know you're actually on the edge. If you go on this way, you could be working down here and you're not getting this sharp. So you just do it so you get a little bit of slurry coming over the edge of the stone and then you know you're right on it. And the same on the other side. And that's how I used to have to sharpen all of those, but now I don't. I use a tormic. Much, much easier and nicer. All right, um, look, here's a little, here's a little carving chisel. There you go, that's a two mil. Number one. Exactly the same thing. Carving chisels, you're generally looking about 20 degrees. 22 degrees, pop it down there, find where your um, line is, let's go, um, I'll tip this on that way, I'm not going to. Right everywhere. <laughs> so you just pick the back of the chisel up until you get that meaty point, the, the sharp point, actually contacting the stone. Keep it flat. Do not move your arms or your hands. Lock your arms in by your side. Slide forward, slide back. Forward, back. And you're keeping it in the same plane the whole time. Turn it over. Maintain the same angle. Backwards and forwards and go across. you notice I'm going across the stone. Actually, I'll change cameras. This way you get to use your whole stone. So from there, forward, whoops. Try not to do that, that is not good. And I'm working my way across the stone. Then if you like, you can work your way back. It depends how blunt it is. If this was really blunt, I would be using another stone. Turn it around and just light passes. And I'll turn it around, lighter passes again. And I should end up just with a little burr on there, which I can, yeah, just feel. Again, bit of leather. Strop it a couple of times on the leather. sheet off the top and there we should have did that come up all right oh that's been with you since you were you had the tv show oh there you go there you go. So easy. Oh, all right. A lot of them been with me for a while, I think. So I hope that helped. That's true, and they're still watching you. Oh. 
Oh, concave. Oh, right, you want a concave veining bit. <laughs> Are they hard to sharpen? No. Here you go. That's cold. Who was that? That was... Uh, what was that? Yeah. Oh. Uh, who do... Shut the door, please! Um, ba -da -ba -da. Come on, Wes! Yeah, John, okay, John. Um, yeah. Chisels, do, 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 do. where are we? Okay, one eighth. Well, that's got to be pretty close. That's a two mil, so that's just under it. That's, that's even thinner than a one-eighth. Is that what you mean? That chisel there? Very, very small little veining chisel. All right. Let's do it. Um, you could, let me see. Uh, let's just have a look. See what tricks we got in here. All right, the very thin edge of a wet stone would get in there. So you could just give that a little bit of a tickle there, right on the edge, like that. Failing that, these really small little easy lap Diamond stones will get in there and clean that bit up. But the outside edge, you just do exactly the same as I did. Is that Dad? Yeah. He was just telling me that one of Nobby's teachers coming around. Oh, well. <coughs> Good. They can stay at the door. Here we go. Uh, so now here, same thing, we got Caro on there. You find that angle, and that angle's the same all the way around, and it's much the same as doing the, the rounds. Get it, and roll it. All right, get it on the edge, and roll it like that. Get it and roll it. And then the other way, if you can, Just roll it, because it's the outside edges that actually are your cutting edge. And then you've just got to clean the, um, clean the inside out if there's any burr there. So we could use this to get in there. Failing that, just get a bit of, um, what have we got here? No, not that. That's about maybe 240 wet and dry. Fold it like that. Just put it in there and there you go. Just roll the chisel. Make this go backwards and forwards and just roll the chisel. And that'll clean the inside out. And let's see if that's made any difference. There we go. Um, no. I'll bring this one over because it's easier. Yeah. Uh, there we go. 
here, we just You go. So that's easy. Problem sort. I hope that one helped, Devin. Oh, money oh. done. Who's married? I am, you can tell. I've got grey hair. Okay, I'm, I'm catching up here. Uh, can't catch up with all this. G'day, Alex. How are you? Welcome to the workshop, mate. Hmm? Atlanta, Georgia, yeah. Talking about different shows, I like the workbench and tool holder in the bedroom. Are uh, any of them still up? No, mate, they're all in the woodworking shed, in the wood turning shed now. So I still use them. Um, yep, no, just, it, I wasn't getting the views. I really thought it would take off. For those of you who don't know, I had another stream called Room for Woodwork and I literally made furniture inside the bedroom. And the deal was I couldn't make any noise, I couldn't make any dust, and I couldn't make any smells. And we did all right. We made a few things, um, but one thing led to another. We decided we'd pack it down and we'd come and focus on this down here. So we're racing, making a cross sled right now so you can put... Oh, in window trim. Yeah, there you go. Cross sleds are good. Oh, it's something you put on the bandsaw, so we got, I use fences and miter boxes, but you can set it up and you can just run all your timber through yeah. and it cuts it to the same length or same angle or whatever you want. <coughs> what angles do you use on carbon chisels? Oh, about 20 to 22 degrees mainly, mostly, James. Mm. Wouldn't the back saw do a faster job than what? I don't know. Uh, Max, Master, I uh, mentioned to me, uh, brought back memories. That's because you master. Yeah, I know. Shut up. I like it. No, <laughs> no, no, it's just something that's stuck, isn't it? You're very formal, Maxwell. You're very formal. Uh, so I bought some cheap and nasty carving chisels from China and had... And got what I pay for, and now I'm trying to make them use. Yeah, look, the thing is, if it doesn't hold an edge, um, as Duck, or Duxy, as he shall now be known by royal appointment. Um, yeah, the file chisels are what I use. And, yeah, they're, you know, 50 bucks a piece or something like that. But they are chisels that will last forever. I've had those... There, um, I started collecting those in 96, so there's 2006, 16, there's 24 years, I suppose, and they get a heck of a lot of use. As I said, I bought mine not as a set, but I bought them to do specific jobs. Initially, I bought um, uh, about eight chisels, I think, because I wanted to carve lettering. Because the furniture that I was making, I wanted to put um, names in. 
and words in, sayings and what have you. And that got me most of the straight chisels and the V, v tool. And then I started doing claw and ball feet on the end of cabriole legs. So that got me into using number twos and number eights and sweeps. Then I started carving um, acanthus leaves and that was another set. Then there was hound's tooth and that was another set. And so, you know, you just gradually build up, but I've never bought a chisel because, oh, that's good, I think I'll buy it. I've always bought it to make a job easier for myself and then down the track it comes in handy. Let's do some wax filling. We tried to do that before. Okay. We did got sidetracked. Um, we'll do wax filling on part and then we'll do um, other filling on t'other part because I've got a big inclusion here and we will use that. Uh, they say when Nan's coming back? Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Now, if you're going to do this sort of stuff, as I said before, use darker. Actually, we can do a practical one here as well. Let me, let me, let me give you anything. Look at this. Kick back. Just, just oh, just don't worry about it. On. Oh, look at that. Hey, he's not Anthony. It's official. The Queensland government do not let him go out in summer in case his legs catch fire and starts a bushfire. <laughs> it's, it's the truth. Oh. All right, I've actually got one of these in these boxes it needs doing, so we can do that. Uh, um... Where is, where is sticky tape? I have not. I'll, I'll put some on your leg. They'll make you scream. Hey, he's, he's a prime candidate for a Brazilian, isn't he? From, from the ankles all the way up. Um, let me see, let me see. The... There we go. All right. What I'm going to do is... Oh, I didn't need that tape. I'll have this tape. I'm going to... Fix a little one here. If you can see there, I'm going to put putty in that one and then I'm going to put wax in this one. Now that's sticking up a bit, so we might just knock that back first. Um, I don't know if it's going to work, but we'll try. <laughs> Yeah, that's better. Okay. So that's nice and flat. Put wax in that one and we'll put putty in this one. And the trick with fixing holes is any, anything will work. I used to larap it on as if it was, you know, free beer at a wedding. I, I didn't care. I'd just throw it on everywhere. But then when it came to cleaning it up, it takes a lot longer. So this one here we'll do first. Okay, so it's that one in there. Now what I do, and I use this on both, whether I'm doing a wax fill or uh, a putty fill, is you put masking tape either side and around. And you might think, oh, this takes too long, couldn't be bothered. In the longer, if you're doing marquetry or something really flash, in the long run, you're saving yourself so much time. So basically, it's like an operation, I suppose. You, 
you just mask off the area you want to use. I'm using this stuff here. And get a bit on my finger. And then I can really push it into there. And I know that's gone in. If I didn't have the tape there, that'd be pretty, pretty unsightly. But we'll leave that for a little bit. And then if you pull the tape off, there you go. You've only got that little bit of putty in there to take out once it's dried. Whereas the other way, you'd have putty all the way around here and around here. If you've got open grain here, the colour will go into that and then that's going to destroy your finish. Well, what we've done there, we've localised it, masked it off and got away with that. We'll do the same with the um, hot wax over on this one. You mask it off where you don't want the wax to go. What I might do actually here is I'm going to do two Two fills if I can find. Okay, I'll find another one. We've got a, that one there. And you'll see what I mean about putting a, a lighter um, putty in, how a darker one you can just, it just almost disappears into the job. All right, and what I use, you can use, um, you can use the tip of an iron and I don't know, we don't know, I've never tried this one before, we'll try a cigarette lighter. I'll do this one over here. With a heat gun. Hmm? Like that? Okay, so that's that. You can use a candle, you can use a blowtorch whatever, I'm going to use a heat gun now. That's my preferred one, the heat gun. High heat, but um, low speed. And I'll show you exactly why in a minute. If I have that on high speed, see what happens? It just blows the stuff everywhere. So low speed high heat and what we'll do on the other end I'll do a lighter lighter one
The other thing the masking tape does, it gives you a little bit of a damn wall. So you can get a bit of depth on it. And um, it builds up to the thickness of that masking tape. And then when you pull the tape off, it's, uh, yeah, it won't take long to dry. It, um, it gives you something to scrape off with. So we'll leave that one there for the moment. There you go. <clears throat> um, mine can go up, I think, to 550. It's 200 watt. Yeah, 550, I think, the top one for this is. But whatever it is, it's hot. I was with someone one day and someone had one on their workbench and they're going, oh, what's that? And turned it on and said, oh, does it get hot? I'll give you an idea. Oh, no. <laughs> I was going to give you an idea how hot it gets, but I'm not going to point it at the camera because it'll stuff the camera. It gets red hot very, very quickly. Oh, no, they could see it because I have the view playing up here. See the lining in it. Oh, you could. Well, he just went straight onto his hand and oh, that that hurt. Oh, so where are we up to now? Let me. Oh, dear, dear, dear. oh I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll pull these. Oh, we'll pull these off so we can see if we can see any difference in the colours. And I'll mark what each one is. Been quite a nice stream today, very easy. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do at Bunnings. Remind me to buy some masking tape. Okay. So I use a lot of it. All right, well, look, for my, 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 my money, I don't think there's that much of a difference, to tell you the truth. Okay, that's tongue oil, boiled linseed oil, Raw linseed oil, finishing oil, teak oil, Danish oil, mineral oil, just plain clear stuff. That's um, yellow shellac, that's de wax blonde, and that's garnet lac. So, I don't know. You tell me. I think it, it depends what sort of a finish, how deep you want it. If you're using Finnish oil or Danish oil, it takes a long time to build up and you get a really nice soft patina on it. Um, tongue oil, as Captain Ken said, takes a long time to dry, but it also gives you a, a thicker film, very similar to uh, boiled linseed oil. 
Um, and then the shellacs. I do know with shellac, if you put a lot more coats on, gold shellac will go yellow, garnet will go uh, a reddy, crimsony colour. Um, D-wax blonde will give you the same colour as the timber, so that's the clearest. And ebony shellac obviously goes black. So there you go. All right, let's... Um, 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 we'll knock the bog off of this one. Uh, now, just a little bit of 220 that's used. We're there. Very, very lightly. Whoops. That's it. The inserts that I put in yesterday. Just get the, the bulk of it off with that. Now I'm just going to go to a 320. And, mate, can you just... Or, um, yeah, just give me one of those D-Wax blonde bottles. Doesn't matter. Anyway, either one. There you go, Tom. Okay, so that's done. All I do to seal that is just dab a shellac over it. And you've successfully dodged a bullet. So that's putty. Now we'll go over to the wax, which is this one, which I might bring this camera over to. So we'll go that one. There you go. And we'll take this off. Might have to do another little coat, I don't know. But you can see how you do with that masking tape. You've just got a little bit of a ridge there, so we should be above that. But, um, it does go all the way through, so we might have lost a little bit there, but we'll give it a hit. Best thing to clean that off is with a scraper. I'll just grab the scraper we sharpened before. And with a scraper, when you're using it, you flex it, you bend it that way, and just glide over the top to start with, and then clean that wax off. And then when you've got the bulk of the wax off, get into it and do a really nice scrape. Okay, so that's the darker one, which looks better. Well, you can see that's the darker one, that's the lighter one. We'll put a little bit of finish on that. And you'll see the darker one looks much more natural than the lighter one. So that you, you don't see that one really, it's sort of, well not that one, you don't see that one, it sort of blends in. but that one sticks out. So that's the reason I always go for a darker colour if I'm doing a repair like that. There you go. Well, we covered some topics today. I never got around to making that box or doing the joints. We might have to do that later on. But still got a bit of time left. Pop that in the bin. Oh, I've got to tell you, again, how nice is it? 
not to have that pressure. Ooh. Body dum, ba dum, ba dum. Ah. Let me go. Where are we up to? Anthony. Hello, sir. Enjoying your show while I'm on lockdown here and there. Thank you so much for everything and everything. Well, thank you, Anthony. I, I appreciate that. If there's anything you want to know, just ask away. And as you said, we've been freewheeling today. Anything that we can uh, do to make it easier for people that are in shutdown or uh, brush up on any skills, tell you what, my head's been buzzing. How do I do that? I haven't been asked that before. I don't think I've done that. But we'll work it out. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Where have we got? I'm going back. Oh, what's the time? I'll go back about 10 minutes. No, 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 no. Come on. Uh, hello, Steve. Although woodworking is a passion of yours, have the business side of corrupted or strengthened your passion for your field of work and how have you managed to combine business and passion? Um, I guess I'm fortunate that I... Oh, how can I say it? I had an epiphany once. I won't go into details, but to me... Providing I've got enough to provide and feed for my family, um, I would much prefer to be creating and making things and that's the main reason that I do what I do. Now, I do what I like. I, no, I don't mean that in an obtuse sense, um, but I, I make what I feel there in, in the heart or if it's something for Sue's, which we've got to get and finish her stuff off or there's something... Um, yeah, well, the rocking chair. I can't do that until I get the, the cane. No, I'm thinking of that cabinet over there we've got to finish for the kitchen. Um, so, yeah, unfortunately, the business side of it, if you're starting out, you're going to have to do... Yesterday I spoke about uh, I creative-driven, market-driven and dream-driven. And uh, I guess I'm at the stage now where I'm neither. I'm just self-driven, which, which is lovely because I can experiment, I can try. What I did think we'd do later on down the track when I get on top of a lot of these jobs, if, if this is still with us and we're in lockdown, I'm going to start making some Glastonbury chairs and make a new dining room suite. Uh, so that'll be fun. Can I help? Yeah, you can help. You can help on the turning and that. I think the main thing is to answer your question, find something you love doing it, but have... Um, a resource behind you that allows you to do that. The hardest thing, I know when I was much younger, much younger, I had to do what I had to do to make a living. <laughs> but now I'm uh, able to do what I like because over 30 years, 40 years of collecting tools and equipment and machinery and metal and veneers and ideas and skills, I can now put them all together. Uh, if I was starting out from scratch, I don't think I'd be doing what I'm doing now, unfortunately, but I go to bed feeling very satisfied and very tired, and that works for me. But, uh, yeah, and, and the other thing is don't try and compete. If you're trying to compete with people with low prices, you're going to go broke. It's not going to happen. So find something you love doing. Find something you have to... My uh, martial arts instructor many years ago, he was he had a couple of university degrees in criminal psychology and whatever else. And yet he, he was a labourer in a plywood factory. And he said, that's what I do to earn money, but I teach karate to have my life. So that's where his love was. And it came through. So through the day, he just went into idle mode. He didn't want to be bugged by anyone. He didn't want to get um, in anyone's problems or in their face. He just wanted to pick up plywood and move it around the factory and then at five o'clock when his dojo opened he came alive and uh helmet i know you're not watching but mate you did a lot for oh i'm getting here you did a lot for me so thanks sensei you were absolutely brilliant so in fact you weren't sensei you were shihan so there you go fifth dan black belt i think very very humble guy uh great teacher wonderful human being closest thing i've ever met to a monk so, there we go. Anyway, um, you're getting a pat down just for driving. 
Where are you going to pat down? Where are you going to pat down? I'm, <laughs> I'm driving there. Oh, dear. What is the question if you consult pictures? You discover the question, what is the... Oh, there you go. <laughs> That's a bit... I can't work that one out, James. Um... Oh, there, there you go. What was it? 48. That's the answer, isn't it? 42. 42. See, Anthony knows. Anthony knows what what the answer is. <laughs> what, the, what the universe is like and everything. That's it. I've never what, read it or watched the Hitchhiker's John Moore told you, didn't he? No, no, no. Oh, okay. Yeah, look, go go to the off-cut bin. Did where did you throw your stuff you threw away, Duck? I'm, I'm coming over there. I hear snapping gloves. Oh, I've got some of them around here. See somewhere? We've got black surgical gloves. Oh dear. Uh, I know I yeah, it was mm, one of the who do we have? Were you the medic, Chuck, or was that a duck? There was someone who was the medic on there. Was it? Yeah, no. I remember in the um, OR, uh, no, the RAP, they did something horrible with one of those checks. Ah. Ah. Oh. Now, yeah, how am I, where am I at? Am I catching up? Uh, I'm down to 12 now, so I've got a way to go. Uh, blow with beeswax added. Um, yeah, I suppose you could do that. You'd have to heat it up, though, I guess. you got a $2 shop up your way because... No, I don't like the cheap masking tape, Max. I like... Um, what do I get? Scotch. Scotch brand, I think it is. I don't go for the Pater's tape. No, Norton's. Norton's masking tape, just the 18 mil uh, regular one. The other ones I find if you leave it on for too long, the gum um, plays up and sometimes the gum doesn't hold as well. So Norton's is the one I like. Good for spray painting too. It is, it is. Because that's the stuff we use when we paint my swords. Mm. That should be something I could do on a stream. What's that? Make one of my swords. Yeah, you could. We could do that as a video if you like, and you could edit it, edit it and then do it. It's up to you. All right, where are we up to? I'm back. I'm back. Joints, waxing, putty repairs, joints. Um, now, I'll tell you what, we'll do it. We'll make a, joke, a dovetail jig. You want to make a dovetail jig? Oh, they, what, what's that? Is that, is that Unifers they're on or Crown of Thorns? What? I don't know. You're reading the chat, aren't you? Sort of. It's yeah. the same chat as mine. Yeah, but I can't. I'm, I'm, I'm down the bottom. I'm getting all the new ones. Oh, well, what am I? I'm getting all the new ones. It's 7.27. Brunello just got on, are you Adams? I don't know. I don't, I don't make me read the poem on poetry. <laughs> that one jumped. <laughs> have you read, have you read Last Chance to See? That was one of his books, but it was a real one. Yeah, 42, you're right, which is six if you're numerology. So what's six? I don't know. I'm two in numerology. What are you? What's, your, what's the date of your birthday? 19. Of what? May. No, it's, what? What year? 2004. Um, well, it shouldn't make any difference. So it is 
four, six, eleven, twenty, twenty-one, three. Your numerology number is three. There you go. Yeah, no, it's all good. Mm. I'm gonna do see if many All right, you go and do that. Well, they're all they're they're all going. There you go. Well, look, I think we we covered a fair smattering there. Um, let me see what else we can do. What did we do? We did sharpening. I'm going to check my batteries. Just about out. So that's good. Mm. See you, James. So that's it. Now you're all you're all on on. Um, we did finish projects. We did. We finished demonstrations, Jeff. So tomorrow, depending on how we're going, I might do a box with different joints if you want. If not, oh, I definitely know what I'm going to do. I'm going to sand that bench back that I'm doing for Susie. Uh, it's been nice to have a day off the boxes, so I might give that a rest again tomorrow. And we'll see what comes up. I'm, I'm going to take this young bloke out because I can go to Bunnings today and I'm going to go and have a coffee if the coffee shop's open and check out my new coals up the road and I might see if I can um, find any more information out of my drone. But I think it's dead. Not if they're done the right way, Jeff. For medicinal purposes, they're fine. I'm not allowed in restaurants or dining car. Well, I might have to get a takeaway. Can I get a takeaway? We will see. Oh, well. Anyway, I will, I will pull the pin on this one. We can join again tomorrow. Nan back. That's all right. I've got some, oh, I've got some editing to do. Because I want to, I want, I'm going to actually post making pasta as a separate video because it was good fun. You can come around here and say goodbye if you want. There's the camera. There you go. What's that heck hooking up? There we go. That's it. So right now, play the, right now they are closing. They're, excuse me, Captain Ken, but my coffee shop is essential. They're taking all the fun out of it, aren't they? Anyway, this is Stephen Anthony saying we're going to put... No, I'm, I'm going to pull rank on him. This is Steve telling Anthony to pull the shed door down and also remember to keep it sharp. But more importantly, keep it... Safe. Safe. Look after yourself. Be kind to each other. Exercise some restraint because I know some people just really subliminally are asking. But show res restraint restraint and some respect and i look forward to having your company in the workshop tomorrow at the same time where we'll do some more woodworking thanks to the mods thanks to everyone that contributed my voice is going contributed to the chat room if you're lurking on the outside hop in get your feet wet have some fun and we're here to do woodworking later on we'll do some metalworking might sunday we might turn the bowl so we might do that out of the wood turning shed so till then remember Thank you very much. Be kind. Be safe. Catch you soon. And try and avoid getting stir crazy. And try and avoid getting stir crazy. That's what they are. That's the voice of the young speaking to you. <laughs> Bye for now. <laughs>